Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering and analytics with Alteryx and Spotfire. If you don't really want to watch a video, you can find the written version of this post on my website, shown on the screen. And if you learned something today, please share this link on social media or subscribe to my channel. So this week, I'm revisiting the subject of access names on visualizations. This is part of a series that I started a while ago with access names on bar charts and line charts, but then I took a long time writing about Alteryx and kind of got off track on this. But this week, a coworker needed help with access names on cross tables, and we spent way longer than we should have working out the expressions. Cross table expressions can definitely be harder than they appear, so let me show you what you need to know. So first and foremost, cross tables employ two access names, access.columns and access.rows. Generally speaking, you'll use access.columns when slicing and dicing data with the horizontal axis and you'll use axis.rows when slicing and dicing data on the vertical axis. And don't worry if that's confusing, I'm going to explain this really clearly with examples. So for the first example, we're going to work with the data set that you see on the screen. And I have a text area set up to the left here with a scenario or a, with a filter on the column that is actually called scenario filter. It's a filter and that is also the name of the column. And then I have two drop-down property controls that are linked to this column. And these property controls are actually controlling what's on my chart. Now, there's a reason for the property controls, but we're not going to focus on that to, to start with. We're going to focus on the expressions. And then I'll come back and explain why I have these property controls. And I also just want to draw your attention to the fact that I have uh, an additional column called scenario comparison. And that's essentially connected to these drop-down property controls. So a user will select two scenarios to compare. And if it's one of those scenarios, it populates this column, as you can see up here, scenario one. And then if I scroll down, you'll see scenario three. And I'm pointing this out right now because we have a couple different cross tables that we're going to work with. One has scenario comparison and one has the scenario filter. And so I just didn't want to confuse you with that. The goal of, of our exercise today is I want to calculate the difference between the difference in amounts, since that's what's on my values axis. I want to calculate the difference between scenario one and scenario three. And the expression on the screen is how we're going to do that. And what this expression is doing is taking the sum of amount from the current node, and then it subtracts that amount from the sum of the amount from the previous node as defined by axis.columns. And in this case, the previous node refers to the previous scenario. And if you're unfamiliar with the term node, check out the link on the screen. I've written about this fairly extensively. And to help you understand this expression, I've created a cross table with amount and then just kind of this, uh, this previous part. Our, our expression that's calculating the difference is sum of amount minus this, and so that's essentially what I've broken apart. The amount, the raw values, the previous value, and then the difference between the two. And so what you should notice here is that scenario one's result on the previous is null, and that's because there is nothing previous to scenario one. And then here we see this value of 48.2 million, which is the previous, i.e. scenario one, value. And so I really want to focus on the fact that the previous value for scenario one is null because there is no previous. And now that may seem really simple, but be careful with this because this, this simple comparison is a little bit of a trap. And I want to go into that trap. So in order to explain, first know that calculated columns always calculate with all data or all records, regardless of whether you're filtering. Whereas expressions written on the axis of a visualization, which is what we're doing, they work differently. They calculate only using filtered data or filtered records, which is why we use them. They're a little bit more dynamic. However, node navigation, which is your previous, all previous, next, etc., the node navigation works with all of the unique values in a column, not just the unique values of filtered data. And why that's, I have no idea why that's the case. This doesn't make sense to me, but I don't write software. So the expression that I've given you works if and only if you calculate the difference between two scenarios that are 
air quotes, kind of next to each other. In other words, it works if you compare scenario 1 or N2 or scenario 5 and 6, but not if you compare scenario 2 and scenario 7. And so to help demonstrate that, I've created a second cross table here. And this is kind of what I was drawing your attention to earlier in the video. Note that I'm using scenario comparison here versus scenario filter here. This one has all of my scenarios. And so this is, this is the way that most people would go about using this access name. Okay, I want to compare scenario one and two, so I'll just take out the filters. I've written the expression on the x on the, yeah, on the values axis. So this should work, and it does work whenever you have scenarios or values that are next to each other, scenario one, scenario two. But if I go to scenario one and three, you'll see that the result comes back as null, and that's because scenario two is previous to scenario three, or we'll see the same thing happen if we try to, connect, try to compare three and five. They're all null, because previous is 2 and 4. This, this relative positioning that I keep talking about, how does this get determined? Well, it is something that you can set, and it's in column properties. And if I go to my scenario filter and my sort order tab, currently it's defaulting to a standard sort order for strings, so they're in alphabetical slash numeric order, and you could custom configure this. But this still isn't really going to solve this problem unless you come in here and reorder them every time you change scenarios. That's not a that's not a workable solution. So how do we work around this? Well, that's where the drop-down property controls come into play. And essentially, there's three things that I've done in order to make this solution work. So step one is to create two drop-down property controls that are connected to the scenario filter. And that will allow me to select two scenarios to compare from this column. And then secondly, I created a calculated column called scenario comparison that has a very simple case statement connected to those two dropdowns. When the scenario filter is equal to the scenario I've chosen, scenario one or scenario two, then populate that value or else make it null. And that's what this column is doing. It's populating for scenario one and scenario three, but not any of the other scenarios. And then lastly, I've applied a piece of data limiting that says scenario comparison is not null, because I don't want to see any of the records when this is null, because I only want to compare those two scenarios. And so that is how I was able to get to this cross table that calculates this value correctly. So to summarize what I've done here, with the property controls, not the filter, I populate the scenario comparison column, which is placed on the top of my visualization. It only populates for the two scenarios I care about, and the calculations are correct because no matter which scenarios I choose, one is always previous to the other. So that's how we make it work for access.columns. And I know that was a whole lot, but now you know how to handle the biggest pitfall of using access.columns. So let's go on to access.rows. For access.rows, we'll work with a similar example. It's the same data set, but we'll calculate a different value. Instead of calculating the difference between scenarios, we'll calculate the difference between dates or uh, between months, since that's how my data is set up. I have one record per month. Because date sits on the vertical axis, we will use access.rows to calculate. This is the expression that we'll use, and Spotfire is going to take the sum of amount from the current node or the current month, and then subtract that from the sum of the amount from the previous node or previous month. So here are my raw values, and then again down here I've done the same thing where I've given you the amount, the previous, and the difference. And here you can draw that connection in scenario 1. Here's 48 million of my raw values, and then that comes up 48 million right here, and then 61, 69, and you can see how that just tracks down. And then our difference is 61.0 minus 48.2 comes out to 12.8. And because the dates occur in chronological order, we won't have the same problem using access.rows that we did with access.columns. So this is actually a much simpler task. So next week, I'm going to come back to access.columns, and I'm going to show you how the exact same expression won't work when you're working with counts or distinct counts as opposed to a sum. But I do have a solution for that. 
So stay tuned for next week. Thanks, everybody.